Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Father and Son Fix. We're going to show you the easiest way to change the oil on your Mercedes or any vehicle. This is the method that a lot of dealers use, and it's incredibly easy. You can do it without even spilling a drop. All right, so here are the supplies you're going to need. Your oil, a filter, a filter wrench. We like to use the strap style wrench which you can also use for some plumbing tasks as well. It's a good tool to have around the house. Some rags and a drip pan. You're not gonna need that to catch the oil though because we have our secret weapon. A 2.3 gallon manual fluid extractor. Good for taking out oil, brake fluid, and any fluid in your car. And this is gonna allow you to pull the oil from the top of the engine. So the filter that you're going to remove is located here on your Mercedes in the front. And we like to use a blanket just to cover around some of these items here so you don't drip anything on them or damage them in the process. Get your filter strap wrench. Now this works. As you move in this direction, it's going to tighten it. So to loosen, you're going to want to go in this direction. And it's got this little handle here for you as well. We like these because this is a piece of rubber and it's not going to damage this plastic here. Got any questions? Um, what would like, what happen if you didn't use the grip and you use something else and that's not that efficient? Would it get the job done still? They have a socket, a large socket that's meant to fit on that exactly. However, if you try to use a large vice grip or adjustable wrench, you could run the risk of damaging this filter housing. So now you're going to get your drip pan. Whoop. And as quick as you can, bring your filter housing into your drip pan. On this Mercedes, there is no dipstick. However, there is a dipstick hole. Now, <laughs> don't let anybody ever call you a dipstick hole either. You've got to stand up for yourself in the world. Now, in the back, there's a transmission filler tube. That is not the oil. Make sure you check for your car or vehicle that you're pulling the oil. Make sure you're pulling the oil and not the transmission fluid because you don't want to go in the wrong direction with those guys or any other fluid for that matter. So you start, you keep feeding, feeding that tube in until you hit bottom. Don't force it in there. You'll know when you hit the bottom. And for those of you who may be concerned, the dipstick tube is meant for a dipstick to feed through and dip down into the pan at that point. You will be okay putting this tube in here as long as you're gentle. Of course, proceed at your own caution. So here we are pulling the oil out. As you pump, it will start the vacuum to suck that oil out from the top and you'll see it coming out. It is dark. Service D overdue. Once the vacuum started, after you get about 10 or 20 pumps, you can stop pumping and the vacuum pressure, push the handle all the way down. Let go. We'll draw the oil out for you and then come back every once in a while to check. You can see the oil splashing in the bottom of the container here. And there are marks for liters. We'll get started and update you as we go. As the oil is draining, now's a good time to also check the other fluids in your car. For this Mercedes, we're going to check the brake fluid, which is under this panel right here. There's the reservoir. And our level is looking good. 
Still pumping. If you're worried about how long it takes, go inside, take a little break, find another little activity to have fun. Remember all the time you saved. Not having to drag out your ramps or your jack stands. Okay, we're getting close to six liters now. And it's good to pump, say, 15, 20 times every two liters or so. Check the capacity and do the conversion for your container and your vehicle. You'll know when you get to the bottom, and you also want that amount to measure up to your vehicle's oil capacity. Otherwise, you may have a leak, or you may need to reposition the hose to suck out some more oil. So we'll show you that towards the end. Right now, we're going to switch gears and take the filter off of the filter housing and show you how to put the new filter on there. Okay, now we're going to show you how to change the oil filter on your filter housing. And there's a set of O-rings that you're going to need to change as well. And start by twisting the oil filter and pulling it down the oil filter housing. And this oil filter ha housing, oil filter housing has one, two, three, four O-rings. So you get your package, open that up. We'll tell you what these marks mean in a moment. And you should get some O-rings with your package as well. And the little diagram that shows you what those marks mean. What we like to do is line up our O-rings in the order that we're going to be putting them back on. It's okay to get a little oil on them because that will help when you put them on. Now you're going to wind up with one extra because this oil filter applies to a number of vehicles. We're working on the W211 E320. So you start with the big guy and we're using a metal tool. You have to be very careful though that you don't scratch this housing to disturb the seal that this rubber gasket makes. So very lightly you just want to get around the gasket and move it over to this side so you're not mixing the old and the new. Not always easy. There we go. That's two. The ones towards the front are a little bit more challenging because they're smaller. Let's try that again from the... Whoa! hey -o. Be careful because that is slippery as well. Come on now. Okay. Let me try the little guy first. There we go. All right, rebuild our confidence on the little guy. Off we go. Okay. Going back in reverse order. Feed each O-ring into place. If you can do it by hand, it's better because you're going to be less likely to damage that O-ring or the plastic housing. Taking it off really helps to have a tool. Putting it back on, as long as you can work it with your fingers very carefully, you'll be okay. Okay, so here's what these lines mean. When you insert this housing, sorry, a little bit of a windy day here. Here's what these lines mean. When you insert this filter into the housing, it doesn't matter which direction you go in, the line though needs to be hidden behind this portion right here. So we like to twist it on and keep going until it's twisted all the way on there. Okay, we're gonna gently put it in the filter housing for now and let it sit there. We're not gonna tighten it up yet. We'll come back to that. We have our oil cap sitting there lightly as well. 
That way we're blocking it from any dust or particles getting in the engine. And now we have our rags free. Still pumping over here. Still extracting fluid from the top. And we're over six. We're at about seven liters right now. There we go. Okay, so we have pulled quite a bit of oil out of here to the point where the oil is now and the capacity of this extractor is right at the capacity of this engine. The, the bellows or the air chamber in there is running into the oil. So we're going to need to take a little bit out and then continue pumping. You can hear it now. It gets to sound like the bottom of a milkshake when you get towards the end. Now is a good time. You can reposition the hose a little bit to see. Kind of like at the dentist now when it's like sucking on, sucking your, teeth. on your teeth there and your gums. Reposition the hose a little bit to see whether you can suck any more out. For those of you who are wondering, and it depends upon your engine, with this engine we have pulled the oil out from the top and then took the drain plug out and all we found was all of about 50 milliliters of oil. Maybe. Maybe. So you're going to get to the point where most of the oil is in the hose itself. Carefully pull the hose out of the dipstick tube and then what we recommend is Lifting that hose high if you have a garage rafter or somewhere to let that oil drain out of the hose into the extractor before you empty the oil out. I know. Boop. Ooh. Okay. All right. So you put the cap back on. Dipstick tube. Then... Tighten up your filter. This time, it's going to go in the other direction. You can snug this guy home most of the way by hand. Oh, got some glove rippage. Come in the rest of the way with your filter wrench and don't over tighten it. All right, now we're gonna add the oil back in. And we have one of every different type of this mobile one. The engine takes 8.5 quarts and they sell it in five quart amounts. So we're gonna start out with a one quart here. You can save an incredible amount of money doing this from home. You can almost pay for the fluid extractor in one oil change versus the dealership. So this, is the big box store bottle with the yellow writing on it. Approved for most Mercedes-Benz, VW, Audi, and Porsche. What type of oil do you think the 918 Spider takes? None. None. It takes no oil. Runs on, on pure hybrid love. And electricity. And electricity. Save your containers. Because you can use those and pour the oil from the oil extractor into those and then take them to take the old oil to a local auto parts or repair place to be recycled. I don't even know what the lowest common denominator of that is. I think it was like every three I would wind up with a five one left over and then that one would work out. I don't know. 8.5. Great part when you're done with the oil extractor, you can pour the old oil right back in to the containers. Once they've been emptied and take it to be recycled. 
makes it really convenient and saves you from a lot of mess. Here's why we like to cover the engine when we're working on it. A bird flew by and pooped on the blanket? Okay. Once you're done filling up the oil, you're gonna to wanna to start the engine and check for any oil leaks at the cap or the oil filter housing. Depending upon your vehicle, you may want to reset the service indicator. We're gonna show you how to do it on this Mercedes E320 W211. Switch the key to position one. Hit the reset button on the instrument cluster three times. That'll bring up your service menu. Then cycle through until you get to the screen that shows you the service data. Now, using the buttons on the right side, Scroll down to confirmation, then menu button, then menu button, service confirmed. Now you can hit the menu button to go back to the service menu. Use the right side to cycle back up to service data. And that will show you that you've reset and you've got a full year till the next service. Now you can cycle back out of the menu and turn off the vehicle. All right, folks, there you have it. That's the easy way to change your oil. We hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Oh, could you put that down? Yeah, yeah, when you move it, that shifts the, the camera. Was I not in the frame? Uh, you were. It's just that you couldn't see really that much of that. Oh, okay. All right.